Now that we've got the plane up on gear, and uh, I've removed a couple of the cross braces just for the video here, but with the cross bracing in, you'll get kind of a final positioning of the way all these ribs are gonna sit. So now is the time to complete the uh, install of your elevator and flap control tubes. Uh, you wanna make sure to verify that there's still smooth motion and um, everything is operating freely. Um, sometimes when you put the plane up on the gear or you've kind of completed the assembly of the first part of the center fuselage here, things do shift around a little bit and so you might need to uh, readjust some of the, the way the tubes fit in here. But anyway, before the final install of the tube and riveting on your uh, mounting brackets here, you'll want to mark out carefully where to rivet down your retaining rings to stop any side to side slop and you want them to be tight enough on there so that there's no play in the assembly so it shouldn't move side to side uh, but not so tight that it actually binds up on the bushings so once you've got that done you can pull it out of the plane drill it and rivet it so that it's um, in its proper orientation and before you do the final install it's a good idea to install your rod ends, uh, just because it's a little bit easier to do outside the plane than it is when it's down in there. And um, once it's all good and smooth, then we can rivet down our retaining brackets. And in addition to that, we can now uh, install these uh, seat belt reinforcement plates here. Uh, make sure to do this before you've riveted uh, the, the inside control plates because it does, these two bottom rivets here do go into this bracket. So you don't want to have those riveted and then come back to try to install this afterwards. Um, and once you've got this done, we can move to the rear torque tube for the elevator. The process for the rear elevator torque tube is basically the same as for the front one. Um, you can kind of see it. I've got some of the jigs here. I leave the jigs in until the canopy is mounted just to make sure nothing can shift around. Um, but it's a good time now to install that rear torque tube. The process is very similar. You want the motion to be smooth. Um, you wanna mark out where the uh, retaining ring goes and rivet that on before installation. And similarly to the front torque tube, you will wanna put on your rod ends and um, make sure those are installed before final install. It's just a lot easier once again to get to them when it's off the plane than when it's on. So now that we've got this done, we can move to our uh, control stick mounting. So the same thing is fairly similar with the uh, control tube here. You pretty much wanna make sure that your rod ends are on before you do the final install of it. Um, so this has already been on the plane and off the plane to mark out and drill our retaining rings here. And the easiest way to install this, uh, one other thing that's not shown right now is before both control sticks are installed, you wanna um, slide through your cross-link control uh, connecting rod. Uh, you won't be able to get it in if you've got both control sticks installed and you're trying to get it in afterwards. So um, now that we've got it ready to install, uh, the easiest way is in this orientation you slide this part through the spar carry through first and just kind of work it through diagonally. And so I'll do that off the camera and once it's in position, then we will um, put the M4 bolts through here on the backside and secure it into place and we'll move to the next step. That's good. As you can see, I'm a little bit further ahead um, now than in the previous portion of this video. Uh, that's not because this is the correct time to do this. It's uh, the right time to do this step I'm about to describe is at the stage of the previous portion of this video. Um, you need to get your rudder cable guides tightened up. So I forgot to film this before. This has been done for a long time on this plane. Um, the rudder cable sleeves need to be tightened so that they don't have a droop in them. Um, but not so tight that you cause warping to these rib channels here. 
So it's really not critical. It's just a guide for the rudder cables so they don't chafe on the wires. Um, it's better to have them slightly too loose than slightly too tight, but you shouldn't have any issue getting just a good amount of tension uh, without going overboard on that step. So go ahead and get those tightened up uh, with the stop nuts on each side, uh, the spar carry through as well as that rear rib there and uh, use some Loctite and get those nuts tightened up. The next step is uh, the flap actuator. Uh, once again, uh, you could have this installed long ago and I actually did and forgot to film it. Um, but this goes to show I have not yet um, spread these cotter pins. Um, even this far into the build, I still haven't uh, mounted the cotter pins. They're just slid through straight uh, so they're in position um, and that's because as you're doing all this wiring for your harness that you see here um, it's always nice to be able to remove that flap actuator if you need to so that's why i've got the cotter pins not split yet and uh, yeah i will mount the cotter pins permanently after the center console goes on permanently basically at final install um, having that flexibility to remove that flap motor uh, is nice when you're doing your brake lines, when you're doing your wires and uh, everything else down there. In addition to that, as I mentioned earlier, once you've got your um, control stick tubes mounted into position, the next step is going to be to properly mount your cross control linkage. So right here you can see the cross control linkage and the best step for that um, the earlier the better as soon as you've got your control sticks mounted and um, in place once you've got all these m4 uh, bolts put on and tightened and everything's good to go um, this process to follow there is to move your control sticks all the way to one side until one of them hits the stop then just slowly spin that um, uh, push rod until the other one gently hits the stop. And then you know that both of them are gonna hit the stops at the same time. And you can go ahead and close off those lock nuts and tighten them. And your cross control linkage is set and ready to go. You may have noticed in the previous clip that my control sticks are not in this airplane. Um, that's because when they're shipped to you, the, the stick length here is slightly longer than what you're gonna need. Um, and that's so that you as the pilot can trim it down to suit your needs. Um, typically what I've found is that about 14 and a half inches from the flat spot down here, um, keep in mind we're not measuring from the rounded inside, the flat spot on the forward part of the stick to the cut point, 14 and a half inches or 370 millimeters, seems to be a good position so that the stick is not too high in the way of the avionics and not too low uh, down between your legs while you're flying. Uh, also, while the stick is out and being trimmed, it's a good idea if you're going to paint or powder coat, vinyl wrap, whatever you're going to do uh, to your stick, about this much of the stick is exposed. Uh, the control boot comes up to about here. Um, and so if you don't want just the gold alodyne finish look, um, this is a good time to get that done as well uh, before the stick is all wired in and connected permanently. So. so one other thing that I wait to do for a little while, as you might have noticed, is I have not had these um, side panels for the control sticks riveted into place. Um, I usually have them clecoed, sometimes I'm going to have them removed. Um, and that is because it just provides a lot of easy access for those wires there to get run through if you're gonna put a connector here. So I put a connector, as you can see right here, I've got a connector so that if you ever need to remove the control stick for some reason, um, you're able to just disconnect it there rather than having to cut wires. So um, running these wires here, putting the back side of the connector uh, in the hole provided there, uh, just allows a lot of extra uh, space so that you can uh, get those wires done. So now that those are done and in place, uh, I've got these side panels riveted into position. Um, something you'll want to keep in mind here is as you're riveting them, uh, just check one rivet at a time that uh, your control stick is still, well it's mostly, it's only this direction for this, 
uh, your control stick is still smooth as it was when uh, it was just Clecoed. Um, sometimes as you're riveting, it can cause a little bit of binding. And so if you can identify which rivet it was, it makes the process a lot easier to uh, determine what to do to move forward to, to uh, reduce that binding. So uh, as you can see here, we've got it all installed and uh, it's ready to go. So once the canopy is mounted into position and we've got all of our wiring taken care of down the uh, side channel here, the parachute cables are mounted and tightened and secured. Your seat belts are in place, your brake lines are in place, and basically everything that would need to be accessed that's on the side panel has been accomplished, uh, as you see here. Uh, it's now okay to install our inside side skins. Um, we'll start with the front one, and then we'll do the rear one. The front one has a lot less involved. Uh, basically, you could install that before the canopy. Um, it's just a lot easier to leave off your side panel uh, when you install the canopy because it does have a little bit of a lip that kind of comes up onto the canopy, just gets in the way a little bit. So as you can see, we've got uh, soundproof insulation foam installed already, as well as our ducting is all been uh, sealed off. So if you're going to use the side channels for your ducting, um, just make sure to block off all of the openings through that. Um, you could use Sikaflex. Uh, I prefer silicone. It holds just fine. It bonds really nicely to the aluminum. It's a lot easier to work with. And I just use pink insulation foam to block up all those holes. It cuts easily. And when it comes time to rivet, the rivet just pushes right through it. So uh, this works really well. As for the side skins, For the side skins here, your front one, it's just important to leave off these two rivets for now. Um, both of these rivets will be used for mounting your uh, dashboard uh, mounting flanges after your upholstery side piece has been put on. Um, also, don't rivet the top ones yet. Um, they'll be used to mount your uh, upholstery into place uh, same thing on this. I have gone through and <clears throat> put the insulation foam on the inside skins. This is optional. You don't have to unless you want to. Um, I pre-fit the skins onto the fuselage to mark out where all of the uh, spar channels and uh, longerons line up here so that we don't uh, do uh, put any foam where it's going to need to mount up to. Uh, in addition to that, I don't put the insulation foam along where your duct channel is going to go. Uh, that's because later on, once we put the upholstery in, we're going to need to put a hole in the side skin so that we can allow our uh, air vent to go into there. So we'll hold off on all of that until after it's all installed. Um, so yeah, like I said, leave off the top row of rivets on both skins and uh, these two here, and we're ready to install these now. So once you've got your insulated side panels uh, ready to go, it's time to install them onto the plane. Uh, as you can see here, uh, it's all already riveted on, and uh, I'm actually a little ahead of uh, when this needs to take place, so never mind the upholstery and some finished parts in there, but. Um, so you'll start by clecoing the longeron um, here, as well as the diagonal one uh, down here. And uh, those should fit up really nicely. Um, <clears throat> and then you'll work your clecos from the front of the bottom, uh, work your way back. And there's a chance that, you know, about the back third of it, uh, the, the holes won't line up perfectly anymore. Um, that's okay. Uh, just get as many as you can uh, without warping the side skin, and then you'll be able to um, match drill the remaining holes back there. Um, and there's no issue with that. And then you'll just do the same thing with the, the rear side skin. And, uh, and this one goes in a lot more straightforward. So um, then you can see that I have not yet riveted the top row of rivets uh, along there. 
And in addition to that, I probably should not have riveted, and the blur, sorry, uh, this mating row of rivets here. Uh, as you can see, I've got riv nuts kind of between those rivets there. Um, it would have been better to upsize those to uh, 15 64ths drill bit size and uh, install the riv nuts straight into uh, those rivet holes instead of installing rivets. Um, but once you get to this point, I'd rather not drill out those rivets to replace them with riv nuts because the tails of the rivets will be lost kind of in the side skin. So anyway, um, the same story is going to be with the top row of rivets holes there. Uh, we will use riv nuts in those to secure the rear side upholstery panel. So the next step is if you do have your upholstery kit already, uh, you'll want to take your rear uh, side panel upholstery and it's going to be fairly locked in uh, between this uh, this plate here. So you'll want to Clico this on if you haven't yet riveted it. And it'll be locked in between your seat rail and this back panel here, um, this way. And then you'll want to line it up with just about the top edge of your aluminum skin here, like this. And then you'll mark out uh, where that, well, sorry, the back end is, there we go. So then you'll mark out where uh, the hole in your side panel is uh, on your side skin. I think it's much better to do it this way rather than trying to use a measurement to uh, uh, a position on this side panel. If you are gonna put the side ducting uh, like this plane is equipped with, um, it's gonna be much, much easier to position the panel, uh, take the hole location and then mark it into here uh, into your aluminum side skin. And then you will be able to, and then you'll be able to uh, just cut out this uh, circle here. I use a handheld uh, uh, flush trim router and just set the blade depth very shallow. And with that shallow blade depth, you know you're not gonna hit anything, you know, your outer side skin or anything like that. And it just cuts through the aluminum very, very easily and you should be able to uh, get that hole cut. So as you can see here, this hole is slightly oversized from what's on the panel, uh, this, the uh, upholstery panel. And that's just to give a little bit of wiggle room for the final position of that hole. So <clears throat> now that we've got the hole cut and the side panels um, all installed, uh, we are ready to actually install these upholstery panels.